Hello and welcome back to coverage of Grand Prix Sao Paulo. Tim Willoughby here alongside Aaron Forsyth and we get the honour and the privilege and the pleasure of bringing you, well, a whole host of great stuff. Before we get on to Unlimited Limited, one of the most electric formats that you're ever going to see, uh, Rochester with Unlimited Boosters here in Sao Paulo, I do need to bring you the top eight of our GP. We have got a modern GP going on. You guys should definitely check it out. And our full top eight is as follows. In eighth place, uh, we had two players that just missed actually on 37 points, but on eighth place with 37, uh, Liano Juki uh, on uh, Abzan, like kind of a traditional kind of junk kind of list, uh, made it in eighth. Uh, Fernando David Gonzalez on Madu Pyromancer, he is in seventh. Breno Magueles on Red Green Aldrazi in sixth. Uh, El we then have Mono Green Tron in the hands of Tiago Casasanta, Amulet Bloom in the hands of Daniel Caixeta, uh, Car Crackland Ironworks in the hands of Sebastian. Sebastian Pozzo, probably the biggest name in our top eight thus far. Then we have more uh, Madu in the hands of Jose Luis Echeverria Paredes. And then top of the Swiss, Vinicius Karam on Affinity. By my count, that's seven distinct deck lists in our top eight. Yeah. There we go. That's Fan tremendous. Yeah. And uh, the Mardu decks are going to be facing off in the uh, quarters against one another. So and then, uh, then variety all the right, way, so everywhere around these it. Four different decks in the top four. Love a bit of that. Really excited to see how those play out. But in terms of excitement levels, I don't think I'm going to be the only one in the room that says that this draft that we have coming up, one of the more exciting things that you're going to get a chance to see in, uh, well, in Magic history, really. This doesn't come up very often at all in Magic. We're going to get a chance to see an, an unlimited Rochester draft. Now, both of those words will be unfamiliar to, I, mean, I guess draft is familiar to many players, but both of those words may be unfamiliar to many of you at home. So let's run through, Aaron, what we're going to see in the next half hour, 45 minutes or so. So the card set that they're going to be drafting is Unlimited, which well, is basically the first set ever created. It's, it's kind of the third iteration of it. There was the Alpha set, which came out initially back in 1993 for Magic, and that had all the famous old cards, the Dual Lands, the Mox, Moxes, Black Lotus, all that kind of stuff. They added a handful of more cards that they forgot initially into yeah, the just, beta release. Just kind of release. fixed a couple of little right. bits and pieces. Th that was the beta release. It was also the, those first two were black bordered, uh, both very short print runs. Not a lot of those cards out there. Then they came out with unlimited, which is the exact same card set as beta, in white border, uh, and a much a, a much larger print run. Still, an by incredibly tiny standards. amount by today's standards. So you know, a lot of these cards are incredibly rare, highly sought after collectibles, and some of the most famously powerful cards in Magic. Yeah, I mean, there will be a whole host of cards in this set that some of the players in this draft will not have seen in real life before because they're, they're kind of almost the stuff of legend at this point. These are some of the oldest, rarest, most desirable cards that have ever existed in Magic. And one of the kind of incredible things is that some of these cards even though they're 25 years old, are still some of the very most powerful cards it's possible to use in a game of Magic the Gathering. Right, and many of them legal only in vintage uh, because of that reason. I mean, obviously when they were first creating the game, Richard Garfield and the gang back then, they didn't quite have their heads around the exact power level of some of these things. So Black Lotus being the most famous example, just an absurdly powerful card lets you get so far ahead um, that, you know, it's only it's restricted in vintage and not legal in any other format including commander or anything else like that uh you can experience it in the vintage cube on magic yes, Online. Very much that might so. be where some of these players have had some experience playing with some of these cards i mean no. that said there's a lot of familiar faces in the set as well like soul ring is a card that is very powerful that i think people have experienced in yeah. commander a lot and there's just a lot of staple effects like giant growth stone rain uh you know shivan dragon these cards that have been in print forever uh, that, sure. that originated in this very first Magic set. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how much of that first set has managed to persist throughout Magic's history. But, I mean, one thing that's going to be unusual is, I mean, this was not a set. I mean, we're talking about drafting this set, and we'll come on to the details of the exact, exact type of draft in a moment. But at the point that Richard Garfield first conceptualized what Magic the Gathering was, I don't believe that draft was really even a twinkle in his eye at that no, point. No, I don't remember exactly when they said they started doing the first drafts, but it was definitely not with the, that initial batch of cards. Uh, I mean, he did envision that the game would be played with, you know, everyone gets a few boosters and plays with whatever they have on hand. So he, we will be simulating that to a, a le some degree here with just kind of the scattershot randomness of some of these decks. Um, 
But as far as the polish and uh, precision that we try to put into our limited formats now, this is pretty far from that. A, a big example is that these booster packs contain, you know, on average four and a half or five basic lands each, because that was the only way to get them back then. And those lands can occupy any any of the rarity spaces, right? That's right. So island in particular is the one that shows up in the rare slot sometimes, which is you know quite a swing in variance from what you're what else you could be getting in that slot. Yeah, it's it's something that I mean, I guess at the time, I mean, I remember I started playing during Revise, which was the set that came out, the kind of the, the core set that came out after Unlimited. Right. And even at that point, just making sure that you had enough lands, it wasn't trivial. It wasn't as if you could go to your local store and they had a land box and they just give you whatever lands you needed. Right. You did need to get hold of those basic lands and it was one of the key ways of getting basic lands was just in booster packs. So a higher rate of them in there and that will impact on the way that this draft works. But now let's talk a little bit about how the draft works because what we're doing now is Rochester's draft which is a little bit different from what you might have seen in terms of booster draft either in your local store or indeed on something like Magic Online. Right. So this one is Instead of each player opening a, a booster at the same time, there's only one booster being drafted at a time by the entire table. And that's done by the, the player whose in turn it is in the order to open. Opens one booster, lays the entire content of the booster face up on the table, and each player goes around the circle picking one card at a time. So every pick is visible to every player. Uh, the contents of everyone's draft is known to every single player at the draft, and you'll know which colors the people around you are drafting just from the cards they pick. So it's a very slow draft format. You, every single card is picked one at a time instead of eight at a time like in a booster draft. And here we go. Yeah, I mean, this is a very spectator-friendly draft format, it must be said, because it does mean that everyone gets to see every card. And time already vault. a Time Vault, a huge addition uh, in this very first pack. Time Vault, a very powerful card, restricted in vintage, not legal in any other format. It comes into play uh, tapped. You have to skip a turn to untap it, but then tap it to take an additional turn. Other key cards that we've got in here, we've got uh, Psychic Venom up the top there. Then Pestilence is the big yeah. one. Yeah. Pestilence dealing damage to all creatures in play. Conversion, that'll turn uh, all planes into mountains. Uh, oh, sorry, all mountains into planes there. Uh, Earthbind, we've got uh, Pearled Unicorn there. A lot of lands in this pack. Circular I mean, Protection it's, it's, Green. If you look at it from a limited standpoint, the pack is terrible. I believe there's two power combined among every card in this booster for from creatures. I mean, Just Pearled Unicorn. It's the only creature in this pack, and it's a vanilla 2-2 two -two for three. So this gives you a good sense of how much of a struggle it's going to be for these guys to get a cohesive limited deck put together. Yeah, your, your classic plan of 17 or so lands, 23 spells, unrealistic in this format because, I mean, how are you going to get those creatures? Uh, the first pick being Time Vault, no great surprise there. Pestilence going next, it's an incredibly potent removal spell, especially when you see how rare creatures are in this format. This is a, a pack that has seven basic lands in, and you can see that basically everyone's going to get one real card, and then most people are going to end up with basic lands. And now, Let's be honest, real card is a stretch for a lot of these. Yeah, Death Ward, for example... Regenerate, you get to regenerate a creature. creature for white mana. Not too exciting. Right. Psychic now, Venom, which um, when your creature gets tapped, you, uh, yeah, when your land gets tapped, you take two damage. You right. just, all of these decks are going to be playing a lot of land. Uh, hesitate to say that everyone's even got a playable out of that pack. And no, I don't think so. I think there were probably three playables out of that pack. Now it must be said that even the basic lands in these old sets kind of desirable because they do represent a piece of magic history and so it may well be that for some of these players these basic lands that they're drafting in this draft they will then find themselves cherishing and looking oh, after yeah. and using in uh, in formats going forward because they're so keen on making right, sure that they can are, um, great, hold on to them great keepsakes uh, you know I, I see people playing with these old lands it's kind of the style most stylish land some of the longtime players use in their decks and I'm sure these deck these lands will end up doing the same thing for for these guys. So Time Vault, the initial start, another copy of conversion coming along. Earth Elemental now, there's a castle, that gives you untapped creatures plus two power. Animate wall so you can attack with walls. Plenty of walls in this set. Uh, Mons Goblin Raiders. Then we have a Guardian Angel there. We've also got the back of Marcio Carvalho's head. We might see if we can get him to move backwards just a little bit so we can see all the cards ourselves. Invisibility coming down there so that creatures can't be blocked. Fear, that's another way of creatures not being blocked. Uh, Circular Protection Red. There's a Swamp. Then we have a Forest. And finally, there is a Power Sink there. Right, again, I mean, Earth Elemental is kind of the 
the best playable card in this pack. Uh, and, even, and the only other creature is a 1-1 one, one for 1. The rare is Animate Wall, which uh, makes a wall lose Defender effectively. Um, and while there are a lot of walls in this format, funny enough, most of them are zero power. So that card I don't expect to do much either. Interesting enough, I think the Circle of Protections that you're going to see in many of these boosters are going to be really relevant cards this format. I know Luis Scott Vargas, when he did the beta draft in Vegas, made great use of some of the Circle of Protections. I think he had a red and a green in his main deck knowing what his first round opponent was. All right, so Earth Elemental was the pick, then Power Sync. Power Sync, a very powerful counter spell. Yeah, it both counters a spell and then taps down the additional lands that are available um, afterwards. So it means that you can potentially stop someone from doing anything on their turn. Yeah, we've tried uh, reprinting Power Sync in some more recent sets, and it's just always way too powerful. We have to take it out. And of course, it has the text Interrupt, and Interrupt not a card type anymore. At the time, there were a very limited set of spells that you could play at Interrupt speed. So once someone played a, a Power Sync, you couldn't play a Lightning Bolt in response because Interrupt a tiny bit faster than Instant. That's right. We have long since gotten rid of the Interrupt card type. Yeah, All it, those cards are instants now in, yeah, uh, in it, Oracle. It mean, only having two speeds, instant and sorcery speed, makes life a little bit easier. Look at that wording. Target wall can now attack. <laughs> the difficult bit about that being, there's not very many walls that even have power. No, I think it's right. what, Wall of Brambles, Wall of Swords. Wall of Swords is kind of the big winner. If you can pull off that combo, it's another white a three, card five in this flyer. set. It's an uncommon. That's a th yeah, 3-5 for 4. Iron Star coming down. That one means you can gain life when red spells get cast. A few lands coming down here. Veteran Bodyguard, that a nice one. It can take damage in your place. Uh, can't quite make it. I think that's an invisibility underneath Marcio's head here. We might see if we can get Marcio to move back just a little bit so that we can all enjoy this draft. Uh, then there's a Murfolk of the Pearl Trident. Dwarven Warriors, they can tap to make a creature with power two or less unblockable. Spell Blast there, Fire Breathing. This has been a super low-powered draft thus far. In terms of actual ways of dealing damage, some of these players, three or four picks in, won't have any in their deck. Uh, circle of Protection, white and red in here. The Circle of Protection, pretty potent uh, even in the main deck in oh, this yeah. particular format because being a two-color deck, that's kind of tough. Um, but and you know what your first-round opponent's colors are, so you can easily main deck the circles specifically to win that matchup. Veteran Bodyguards of the Rare, there you see it up on the screen. Uh, if it's untapped, then whatever creatures would get through to a hit you, hit the Bodyguard instead. And it's got five toughness, which is really large in this format. Yeah, so that, that one, kind of a brick wall for a lot of things that are going on. Uh, you know, look at that devilish look in his eye as well. He's only got one eye, but it's looking right at you. Yeah, he reminds me of Lou Ferrigno, who's the incredible <laughs> Hulk in the, in the 1970s. Um, so of note of what, what, what the power level of this format is like, there are only two common flyers, both of which have only one power. It's Mesa, Pegasus, and Scrib Sprite, so you're not going to see much is way in the way of evasion. Uh, there's a bunch of, at least two, there's two red common X spells, though, Disintegrate and Fireball, um, which yeah. is kind of the preferred way to win games, I think, in this format. Yeah, I mean, we already saw Pestilence is another big common uh, game-winning card. Yeah, Pestilence, you do have to have a creature in play yourself uh, to keep it around. Uh, but there are obviously various ways of achieving that. I mean, the ideal would be having something like a White Knight in play that's got protection from black. Right. It will survive any amount of Pestilence hits and then in turn mean that you can keep your Pestilence around. Lots of lands being taken here. No respect for Healing Salve. I would actually snap up a Healing Salve here because you know what? It's a spell that you can potentially play. And keeping one of your creatures alive from a piece of removal, a big deal in this format. Right, or in a, in a fight between two 2-2s, two so you can keep yours alive with the uh, healing sound. Okay, moving along to our next pack now. So far, the, the kind of big standout card that's been opened thus far is a Time Vault. But moving on to our next pack, we'll go to our top-down view. Let's see what we have in our next pack. Just being laid out here. We should hopefully find out what the cards are that have been are to select from soon enough. We will not let anyone yeah, take any cards <laughs> until we get a chance to see them too. This is hopefully fairly short. It looks like, yeah, well, I mean, I guess we'll see soon enough exactly what we've got going on here.
even the judges just double checking what some of these cards are. Hopefully we'll get our top down view back soon enough so that we're going to be able to get a chance to um, see what these cards actually are. Okay, okay. Jade so, Monolith is so that card. There's a balance in this pack as well though. That potential oh, that's way. Jade Statue, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jade Statue. There's a lot of Jade going on in this set. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gloom, a very potent way of stopping white cards. Balance, a way of killing a lot of creatures in one go if you don't have any creatures in play. Unsummon, a card that we've seen in lots of sets already. Um, sea Serpent, if both players have islands, that gets to attack for an awful lot. Uh, the Jade Statue I like a lot because it's it's not always a creature but can be when you need it to be, and 3-6, a gigantic right, that, size. That, I thought that would be a higher pick there. The stats on that thing are really impressive for this format. Wall of Ice, the 0-7, that will stop people from uh, doing a whole lot of attacking with most creatures on the ground in this format. Unsummoned going kind of late. This kind of a juiced pack when it comes to things that people will actually be played. Uh, Black Lotus, sadly not in this pack. We're not going to see that one <laughs> just yet. But, you know, foreshadowing, maybe we'll get, at least we get one revealed as these cards get taken away from the, uh, the Grand Prix play mat. Stone Rain, in some formats, might be relevant, but everyone's going to have so many lands that I really can't see that it's going to be a big deal in this exact format. Right, there aren't any lands that do anything special in this format other than make mana, so you're not going to be hitting anything like a Maze of Ith or a Creature Land or anything like that. And right, the just the sheer, I expect people to have around 20 lands in their 40-card deck, so Stone Rain, it's going to be hard to build a deck that capitalizes on the tempo of Stone Rain. Oh, wow, now we have a Senge Vampire. This is a big uh, pickup for someone here, and a Mahamoti Jijin. Uh, the Jin and the Senge Vampire, probably the two best creatures that we've seen so far in the draft. A Lightning yeah, Bolt, yeah. one of the premium removal spells available in this format. This is a potent selection of cards. Crawl Even a Crawl Worm, worm a big deal. Blue hit. Elemental Blast, that can stop a Disintegrate. And there is a Disintegrate in this pack too. An abundance of riches for some this is selection of the table here. The most powerful limited pack we've opened yet, for I mean, sure. This would, a be a, shot. this would be a relatively powerful uh, limited pack in more recent sets too, just because of the fact that, you know, the Mahmoti Jin, Jin the uh, Senge Vampire, both Disintegrate and Lightning Bolt. These are all very playable cards. Even the uh, Blue Elemental Blast, because of the power of the X spells in this format, is going to be relevant to someone here. Yeah, and Obsianus Golem is a 6-mana 4-6 vanilla creature, but that's you know bigger than just about every other ground creature Lightning in Bolt the over Disintegrate seems crazy to me here. Yeah, I agree with that. But it looks like someone getting a gift of a third pick Disintegrate here. Fourth pick Sarah Vampire, uh, sorry, Senge Vampire, sorry. Crawl Worm Oh, no, Obsanius Golem going uh, next. Crawworm, just a great pickup here. I mean, re even regeneration isn't the end of the world in this format because if you can get a big creature and keep it alive, that's going to be a big deal. And it's only things like Disintegrate that can really get past regeneration. Yeah, or Unsummon maybe. But yeah, in general, back in my younger days, putting regeneration on something like a Crawworm was a huge deal. Now, you'll see that, th that there was a moment there where a player took two cards. That's because the way that it works in Rochester Draft, it's not kind of like the first person picks and you just go in a big spiral round. One, whoever gets the last pick from a pack also then gets to pick, uh, so, as, sorry, is the last person to pick right, from a the pack. the eighth and ninth picks. They get the eighth and ninth picks, and then it bounces around in the opposite direction. Right. Uh, one of the details of Rochester we weren't quite able to get to because we wanted to actually jump into this draft. Evil presence, and not much of a presence at all, uh, just meaning that uh, land gets turned into a swamp. But fast bond does mean that you can potentially accelerate out something big. Scrib Sprites, deceptively powerful in this format as one of the few flyers at common. If you can slap an unholy strength on it, that's not too bad. Lamoir Elves, it came from Unlimited. It's back in uh, more recent sets. And even Iron Claw Orcs is a 2-2 two -two for 2. Actually a very efficient yeah, creature. Very much so. So Fast Bond's the rare. Uh, a powerful, powerful constructed card uh, that lets you play all of your lands from your hand at the price of one life per. Uh, don't think it's that good in Unlimited. But, I mean, that's one for the collection. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a desirable card that I can see a lot of people picking up simply so that they have a fast bond. This is one of those cards that did not get reprinted a whole lot. Uh, it made it into Unlimited. I think it made, may have made it into Revised it did, it as did, well. Yep. But um, after that, it kind of went on the back burner as it was became fairly clear that it was very powerful. An easy first pick. I'm Clorox second. That shows you how powerful a bear is in this format. Even a bear that is worse than average. Lamorel's being taken. Someone's getting a gift in this late Scrib Sprites. Um, it is one of those cards that 
in most formats, a 1-1 flyer for one, not a big deal. But you know what? This is not most formats. Right, I think it would was, was a better pick than the was it Wild Growth? That someone the Lamar Elves? No, the, there was a, was a, there was another card that between the Lamar Elves and the Scrib Sprites that was taken. Um, but yeah, Scrib Sprites. I don't hate Unholy Strength, even nope. though uh, there's ways of getting a two for one there. It represents a little bit of extra damage. Right, and there there was a, a Drudge Skeleton in the pack, a one one Regenerator, and Unholy Strength on that. If the both if the one player got both of those, is a a pretty good combo for for two commons in this format. Now, one of the nice things about this format, you are able to kind of, uh, as a spectator, take notes on how people's decks are shaping up. Are there any sort of key decks that look like they've got a, a slightly stronger start going forward? Um. I mean, I guess whoever's got the Pestilence must be in pretty reasonable shape. Yeah, I don't see that he got many other good black cards after that. He had got the Obsianus Golem and the Earth Elemental with this Pestilence, with their both incredibly high toughness creatures. Wow! Here's our first big uh, collection card there in uh, Volcanic Island. Uh, Volcanic Island, one of the premium uh, dual lands, the original dual lands. It's just an island and a mountain all in one go. Comes into play untapped, no cost in terms of life, no cost in terms of anything else. Someone will be very happy to be snapping that one up. And the rest of the pack, well, we've come to learn about this whole just the just the one creature in there. That's not a skeleton in the pack. That is a raised dead, a sorcery that can return one creature from your graveyard to your hand. Look at the hypnotic text box of the volcanic island. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's they, There was a, a visual way of representing it being both red and blue, and that's the one that they went with in these early sets. It's only later that we started to have the kind of more blended colors across uh, text boxes. But volcanic island really popping off there. Uh, so the, the clear first pick. After yep. that, though, well, I guess we'll have to wait so and the, see. The next pick's by the guy who has Singer, Vampire, and Dredge Skeleton. He's picking Grey Ogre as the only <laughs> creature capable of attacking in this entire booster. Yeah, I mean... Sinkhole is an interesting card. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a more efficient Stone Rain, so I can see why it got picked over Stone Rain, but I, I think that either way around, it's not going to be particularly devastating when it comes to the actual gameplay of this draft. Worth noting that we're going to be focusing on the, the gameplay from our top eight in modern because we believe that that's going to lead to slightly better matches than uh, what we're going to have from this draft. And based on what we've seen so far, not necessarily a big surprise there. The power level of this draft has not been high in terms of uh, actual decks, though we're still hoping that someone is going to open some power before the end of this draft. Yeah, right now the people with the big flyers, the uh, Sengir and the Mahamadi, uh, are, are kind of the clear favorites for me. Yeah, I mean, the, the late Disintegrate, kind of a surprise there. Lightning Bolt over Disintegrate, a pick that I'm sure a lot of people will be frowning about. Maybe someone's thinking, well, you know, I can play this Lightning Bolt in Modern and having an unlimited Lightning Bolt's kind of cool. But I don't know. For me, the Disintegrate, just so potent. Right, I was talking about this with uh, Paul Ritzel when we were doing the, the Vegas one. And in a modern, I mean, in a current limited format, Lightning Bolt would be a better pick than Disintegrate because, you know, the games are much more tempo-based and efficient spells are important. Um, but here, Unite they did that card to win the game for you, and Disintegrate is going to be capable of that. Okay, Animate Dead, the first non-spell. Then we have Guardian Angel. It's not an angel. It's just a spell that prevents damage. Plague Rats, uh, Circle Protection Brew, Mons Goblin Raiders. There's a Fireball. That's going to be a big one for somebody. Dark Ritual. Animate dead. It can animate creatures from your opponent's Ooh. graveyard. A Wheel of Fortune. Big draw seven there coming along. And finally, Basalt Monolith. A nice way of potentially accelerating into something, though you need to have something to accelerate into. Uh, right here, we've got a few power cards. Animate dead. If there's a good creature that either player has, you get to get it out that graveyard. Fireball, a very potent bit of removal. But Wheel of Fortune, drawing seven cards, it's always tempting. Absolutely. Another another famously powerful card uh, that's restricted in Vintage and banned in every other format. Can we be interested other to see what's, what's taken out of, of this pack. I mean, for me, for Limited, it's hard to argue with a Fireball. That's it will right. actually win games in a way that these other cards can only hope to do. Uh, Animate Dead, very potent, but those collections, they're being built up there. Wheel of Fortune being taken first. And I think that whoever gets this Animate Dead Fourth might actually be pretty pleased with themselves because there is the potential for it to do some good work here. I think these players, they kind of have to live with the notion that in terms of having a nice color balance deck, 
that's a little bit of a, a vain hope in many cases here. It's not easy to end up with a streamlined deck in terms of colors. Right, uh, or mana curve or anything that you're used to. Yeah, make the most of the powerful cards that you can because there will be some packs where you simply don't get any. Right, and if all your powerful cards cost three or four mana, that's just the way it's going to be. And you'll just have to put enough lands in your deck to make yeah, sure I mean, you Yeah, I mean, a cheeky him. Dirkwood Boars for someone here would be a very welcome pick up. A, you know, a, a War Mammoth. Dirkwood Boars didn't show up until Legends, but yes, War Mammoth is a totally reasonable ground creature, a 3 3 trampler for four. Iron Root Tree Folk, if someone could find one, they, they dominate a, a board, at least in terms of on the ground. These players just double checking what they picked up so far. I don't think it's necessarily worth it looking at those cards and thinking, right, I'm locked in on a strategy here. More just a, maybe a matter of, well, I've got a Pestilence, so I know I'm going to want to have lots of Swamps, so on balance, I might want black, a black card rather than a, a green one, say, if there's a close pick. But close picks, we've not seen too many of them thus far in this draft. Already some big, thick top loader sleeves being applied to some of these cards drafted. Some of these cards, very, very desirable. These players are going to want to make sure that they can uh, keep them uh, good and safe. Yep, many of them quite rare and have not been printed since this, this set. So in terms of how far we, we are through the draft, I think that's our first eight packs mm -hmm. all down. So now the uh, draft order will be reversed. Tranquility, that can deal with enchantments. Uh, Prodigal Sorcerer, Tim, as he's sometimes referred to, uh, a way of killing a lot of creatures. Our first creature with banding coming along in that Benalish hero. Red Elemental Blast that can deal with any blue spell or permanent. There's our rare. That's Cormus Bell, but it's not going to be as exciting to actually win the draft as Orcish Artillery. Cormus Bell turns all swamps into 1-1 one -one creatures, not necessarily even something that you want to be doing. Right, yours or y and your opponent's. A very bizarre card. So... Two creatures here that can deal damage to other creatures. Orcish Art Artillery, it will d tap to deal two damage to a creature, three damage to itself. Three damage to its controller. Three damage to its controller, sorry, yes. And then we have um, Thicket Basilisk, potentially an interesting one. Anything it gets in a fight with at the end of combat will get killed off. So this is not quite uh, Death Touch, but right. something vaguely familiar to those of you that understand Death Touch. Right, even if the damage is, it deals is prevented, as long as it was blocked or blocked something, that creature will die at the end of combat. So Orcish Artillery is the card you're hoping to com combo with Circle of Protection Red. Luis Scott Vargas did that back in Vegas uh, to good effect. Uh, and then the Banding Banalish Hero, which is going to get picked here. A very strange ability, but one that can be relevant in this limited format. Yeah, so we'll go through Banding a little bit more maybe at the end of the draft. But the important bit to remember is that if you've got a Banding creature available to do multiple blocks on defense, it ends up working incredibly well for you. That's right. You get to split the damage however you want, and that way around, there's a very real chance that a big block, you don't lose any creatures, and your opponent does lose their attacker. Very fiddly little ability. These random enchantments like feedback and power leak that make things deal one damage to their controller and whatnot. Or I mean, if someone's got a circular protection that's not circular protection blue in play, and you stick a feedback on it, 20 turns later it will end the game. It's, it's not true. pretty but consistent sources of damage that aren't going to be sub uh, subject to removal might actually be worth considering in this draft format. It's a, a very strange piece that we find ourselves with here. These players desperately hoping that they're going to be the one that gets a chance to see potentially a Black Lotus somewhere in this draft. Yeah, I don't believe that in any of the f four of these now that we've done across the many different Grand Prix that there has been a Black Lotus open. So we, maybe we're due. Maybe we are. Let's jump alongside Twiddle, Lamorels, Unholy Strength, Power Sync coming down there, Scrib Sprites, Drudge Skeletons. Everyone's still waiting for that big moment. Another Time Vault. <laughs> Two Time Vaults in one draft. Is someone building a theme deck here? I don't Crazy. think it can be the same person. But there's also a Sega Vampire. Oh my goodness. This is a pack where there's someone getting a gift for their collection, someone else getting a gift for their draft. Uh, Senge Vampire, one of the more potent things. A 4-4 four, four flyer for 5, only getting bigger when it kills off blockers. Flash fires, very potent against the white decks, but the first and second picks have to be locked in here. Absolutely. It's interesting that Time Vault does combo with Twiddle, if you actually want to try to run this in the limited format. That each time you can find a way to untap it, gives you an extra turn. 
Yeah, it's, it's difficult to engineer anything more uh, complete. I don't think the Animate Artifact was in... Uh, no, it is. Oh, so yep. Animate Artifact plus uh, Instill Energy. Yep. And you're able to take infinite turns. If someone pulls that off in Unlimited Draft, you know, kudos to them. They've got both very lucky and then, you know, their games have come together fairly neatly. But this pack... I, I still keep looking at these script scrites and thinking... It's, it's a green lava axe in this format. Yeah. It's going right. to get a lot of damage through before anyone can do anything about it. And being able to play a creature on turn one, that way some people aren't playing creatures until turn three or four. Right, we haven't seen a giant spider. We have seen one prodigal sorcerer and an orchestra artillery. There are a few really good answers to the script sprites there. But in general, I think, yeah, that's one of the... You know, people play Suntail Hawk in Limited now, uh, you know, a reasonable amount. And just based on the power level of these cards in general, that sh that I think that one should probably be going a little higher. I recall Mark Rosewater talking about how good his script sprites plus unstable mutation deck was back at the very start of Magic, and I'm sure that it'll be the same situation uh, here now. That so, with our next pack, we've got a Drain Life. That is a removal spell. It's very heavy, heavy on black mana to deal very much damage, but damage is damage. And Samite Helium might actually be kind of the sleeper pick here thus far, being able to prevent damage. Uh, a great way of keeping your creatures alive. Oh, and this is one of the rare island packs. Oof. Look how many lands we have here. Nine. Great, so Drain Life is effectively an X spell, uh, but the X must all be paid with black mana, uh, similar to uh, similar cards like Consume Spirit that have been printed more recently. Spell Blast, an interesting counter spell. You had to pay X and a blue to counter a spell where X is the cost of the spell that you're countering, so it's always going to cost more than the spell that you're countering. But that doesn't mean to say that that's necessarily a bad thing. If it's a, if it's a scary spell, then, yeah, you still want to yep, counter it. Yeah, you'll still do it. It's, just, it's going to be difficult to counter a fireball with it. So the, uh, for creatures in this pack, we have uh, two 1-1s, one, one for three mana and one for two mana. The Lay Druid letting you untap lands, the same out here letting you prevent damage. Realistically, I think that everyone's going to have enough lands. Uh, I don't think that the extra mana available from Lay Druid is as important as it simply being a warm body. Yep, that's that's the state of affairs here. I, I think uh, Drain Life and Samite Healer are f by far and away the best cards in the pack. Samite Healer taps to prevent one damage to anything, can mess up combat. Uh, it can, it, again, it's another good answer to getting hit with a Scrib Sprite or something like that or return, so that card's actually pretty powerful in this format. Yeah, Spell Blast, the cheeky little counter spell, getting picked relatively early, but to be fair, on the wheel, someone's getting two islands. Yes, with the nine basics in this pack. I think that's the high watermark that we've seen in any of these drafts for the number of basics in one pack. Yep. Obviously, when you get a land in your rare slot, not ideal, not what you're hoping for. At least these players each opening three packs as, and getting a first, pack from, first pick from three packs in this draft. Everyone just looking through their draft picks as they go. This is it's fundamentally very, very different to how it works in a regular booster draft. Right, you can look at your... Uh, your picks in between every single pack. Uh, okay. In booster draft, that means you can do it three times, and here it means you can do it 24 times. Root Trufuck, the first creature in this pack. There's a Terra. At common, that's a good way of destroying any non-black, non-artifact creature. Paralyze, it looks like a removal spell, and in many formats it kind of functions as one. Uh, taps down a creature, and it costs four to untap it. In this format, though, there's so much mana available that it doesn't necessarily lock things down for all too terribly long. Uh, of the creatures in this pack, you've got a flyer uh, in that Mesa Pegasus, flying and banding on that one for two mana. Uh, Iron Root Tree Folk uh, for f five mana, you get a three five, and then there's Wall of Bone and Scathe Zombies. Wall of Bone, a one four regenerator, which is just a nightmare to attack through on the ground. I believe Copy Artifact, the rare in this pack, so for one and a blue, you get to create a copy of an artifact right, that's in play. Especially the card Sculpting Steel, which was in uh, Mirrodin, that clones effectively an artifact except it costs blue to cast and I believe it remains blue yeah definitely one that's worth well a little bit of a read such. the templating has changed a little bit over the years in terms of how these things work oh it remains an enchantment interesting so, so tranquility can deal with a copy artifact version right. of a an artifact scathe zombies as a three mana two two, actually kind of fine. Uh, Mesa Pegasus being picked up that late. Someone's going to feel relatively pleased yeah, about that's that. A, that's a good card. Holy armor. Uh, 
gives you toughness. Yeah, plus two toughness naturally, and then you can pay white mana to increase the toughness still further, as if that were not enough. Yeah, I think that we're, we're likely to see everyone in this draft playing with, I'm going to say 20 plus land, because yep. in terms of playable spells, it's not a given that you're going to get one in every pack. And of course, only 24 packs opened. In between packs, these players carefully reviewing, and we're... We're going on to the next one shortly here. What do we have? Murfolk of the Pearl Trident. Shannon in Drides. That's a 1 1 Forest Walker for one. Weakness and minus one, minus two, minus one. So a nice bit of removal there. Circle of Protection Green. Pearl Unicorn. There's Earthbind. Great against Flyers. Another Pestilence. So Pestilence, so far, the standout card in this pack, but we still have the potential for something big. Another Cormus Bell. Yikes. Cormus Bell pairing very, very poorly with Pestilence. Wall of Air, Regrowth, and another Earth Elemental. And Wall of Air, kind of an interesting one. A 1-5 flying wall, so able to block pretty much everything in the format uh, without even dying. Except the Mahamadi Jin that we saw earlier, yeah. Uh, Earth Elemental, a nice large creature in here. Regrowth, the card that, of the cards in this set that sees the most play in Vintage. And that one of the ways that I'm sure some of these people might uh, evaluate the pack. But in terms of what's going to win this draft, I don't think the Regrowth is going to be the early pick. Pestilence, clearly the most powerful. But if you're sort of two or three seats down in this draft, you're thinking, well, can I get an Earth Elemental? Can I get a Wall of Air? Like, Weakness, what are my yep. options? Mm -hmm. Shannon and Dryads. In, you know, in matchups against other green decks, very similar to Scrib Sprites and other just chip away one at a time ways that you may ultimately, you know, deal five damage to your opponent before it's dealt with. Or Someone very quick to game. pick up a third pick pe uh, Pestilence there. Second oh, pick yeah. Pestilence, that's kind of fair enough because any time that you're, you're thinking about these, the collectability of some of these rares a big deal. But taking a, a second pick that's not Pestilence here, potentially very dangerous. Well, as we're kind of midway through this draft now, uh, if you're not black at all, I mean, Pestilence requires quite a commitment. I think there's at some point you just can't take the most powerful card. You're going to have to think you have some a skeleton of a deck together, and then you're going to need to take cards for your deck. I now, think we're at that point now. What was the rarity on Pestilence in uh, in Alpha Beta Unlimited? Common. Because I know it came back at common in, uh, yeah, in it, as a saga. It, it, it was common right, all of those times. It's a ridiculous common um, that you know takes over a game to keep your opponent from all of the cards in his hand are dead effectively once the Pestilence comes down. Yeah, the best you can hope for is maybe try and wait it out and hope that the Pestilence goes away once you kill your opponent's creatures. Giant Spider in this pack, a big old creature. Shannon in Dryads, Murfolk Pearl of Trident. We got Weakness and Drain Life again, and Living Lands there uh, coming down. That one, interesting how that one plays out alongside um, the likes of Pestilence. <laughs> Right, so that Living Lands makes all lands into 1-1s. One We've seen multiple Cormus Bells that make just swamps into 1-1s. One I mean, in a format where people don't have very many creatures, Living Lands suddenly changes that dynamic quite a bit. All forests oh, become 1-1 one -one creatures. Forests. Sorry. Yeah. You can see that, you know, that is a, a very literally a Living Land there. Jumping up to say boo. So Drain Life, uh, I think just black in general has been the best color in this draft by a mile with multiple Pestilences, multiple Drain Lifes, and multiple Sengir Vampires. So whoever, whichever players are the black drafters, I believe are sitting pretty right now. Yeah, only the one Terra thus far, um, but potential for that one shot. I mean, the power of the black commons in uh, Unlimited, very high indeed. In red, you do have the potential for all of these X spells, but we've not seen too many of them in this draft thus far. I believe just a, d a Disintegrate and a Fireball. So White Ward there getting picked up. A whole cycle of white enchantments that can give protection from each color to a creature. Right, White at Common has five Circle of Protections taking up five of its slots, and at Uncommon has five Wards taking up five of its slots, so uh, you can see why the creature counts are so low in these sets. There's just so many... Ridiculous, ridiculously bad enchantments by today's standards. So fog coming down here. There's another sinkhole. There's been a few of them come out. Phantasmal terrain, so you can turn a land into a different land. Right, phantasmal terrain, the key card if you hope to attack someone with your sea serpent. You turn one of their lands into an island. 
Hal from Beyond, kind of an expert, oh, it is an expel, uh, giving an instant speed a creature plus Ooh. X power, but there is a plateau, and talk us through the artwork on that plateau, because if you're used to uh, other, other sets, you may not have seen this artwork. Right, so the, the most common plateau from Revised has a different piece of art than this one. Uh, this one by, by the, the newer ones by a guy named Cornelius Broody, but this one is by Drew Tucker, and the story as I know it from working at Wizards is that this art file was lost. The, just the, the graphics file was lost between the printings of uh, Unlimited and Revised, so they had to come up with a new one. So you know, of the ten dual lands, this is the only one that, that changed art. Uh, and so th this one is definitely the OG, super cool version of the card. Now, the uncommons in this pack, very cool. We've got Black Knight, uh, a 2-2, two -two, protection from white for two. One of the most efficient creatures in this entire draft that we've seen. Karma will punish those players for having lots of swamps yeah, in play. what a brutal card that is. Just does, you lose one life on each upkeep for each swamp you have in play. Life Force also just an absolute hammer blow against players looking to play black. Because it's an enchantment that sits in play and lets you play black, black, in order, to, green, uh, sorry, green, green. Yep. In order to uh, stop those black spells even coming down. Right, it's a card that just makes no sense in the current color pie. It's a green enchantment that lets you counter black spells by just paying two mana. You do this every turn as many times as you can afford to do it. It's a completely unfair card against black decks. Uh, so yeah, between that and Karma, maybe the black decks will be kept in check by some of these vicious, vicious hosers. Yeah, I mean, if if, you, if the Karma player plays against a Pestilence player. What like what's the pestilence player meant to do? Because, I mean, they they need to get the damage in fast if they're going to win the game at all. Because, karma each and every turn that's one point of damage for every swamp. Right, and that pestilence the pestilence damages pestilence both player players, so you can't use that as a as a way to try to win the game. Um, we saw a couple other good comments in that pack. Both the Howl from Beyond, which can surprise kill you if an attacking creature gets through, and Crawl Worm again, uh, the biggest the biggest comment on the block, kind of the precursor to the. Colossal Dread Mars that we like to print in all of our sets now. So Fireball's the current standout in this pack. There's a reverse damage which doesn't necessarily, like, the name doesn't necessarily describe everything it's doing. It means that if you would take damage instead, you can gain that much life. So it sort of double prevents damage, I suppose. Wall of Ice, a big old wall coming down in green here. Uh, zero 07 wall, I think that one is. Uh, a few interesting options here. Circle of Protections, again, just coming along left, right, and center. Protection blue. I mean, there is that uh, Mahamoti Jin that you are going to want to find a way of dealing with. Uh, creature bond. Terrible mm. card. Yeah, <laughs> not really worth worrying about too much. Bit of text on it, but none of it too relevant to how this draft's going to play out, I wouldn't imagine. So we saw uh, they were passing. There's no way he's picking that card. He must just be reading He's it. reading this card because it's... It, I mean, if you kill a creature with a creature bond on it, then... The creature's controller does feel pretty unfortunate, but uh, how much toughness have we seen on most of these creatures? Right, it's one or two. Um, you saw them passing that uh, hard-shelled, black-bordered Wheel of Fortune across the table. That's what they're using to mark whose turn it is in the draft. Uh, in a Rochester draft, the spot between the first pick and the eighth pick is called the wheel because that eighth pick does get to pick eighth and ninth. So that's that's the the cool, flavorful marker that they're using to delineate who. Who gets the eighth pick in the draft? The eighth pick having just happened there. Two picks in a row, and now we, we see whether or not Creature Bond is going to go before all of these basic lands. It's not looking too hopeful. Oh, <laughs> right where it deserves. Now we'll see if someone can Creature Bond someone else's wall of ice and yeah, seven, terror yeah. it to d deal seven damage to them. That'll be a poetic way for one of these games to end. All right, so we, we continue to work our way through this draft. Double Corma Spell in one deck here, alongside Black Knight. I'm spying down the bottom of our, our screen. I don't know whether or not you want to play these Corma Spells in your black deck. No, but he does have Basalt Monolith and Obsidianus Golem, which can get out of very quick force. Double fireball, fireball in there, though. Yeah. That I like. Flash fires if he fa finds himself up against the white deck that might karma him. I, I, I'm okay with this. There's going to be a lot of waiting around on drawing your good cards in this format in a way that maybe curving out might be the plan in many other draft formats. Yep. So these players, I think this is the end of the second round of packs now. So we're 16 packs in of our 24. We've seen 
Two time vaults, one original art uh, plateau. Yet to see any power from this draft. One volcanic island. One volcanic island. That was a nice one. A wheel of fortune and a fast bond, so. Yeah, there's every reason for various players in this draft to feel very pleased about having to qualify. Not necessarily quite so pleased about the quality of their decks by traditional standards, or by modern standards, should right, I say. Right. And I'm sure some of them shouldn't feel that great about their decks even in this format standards because we just haven't seen that many powerful limited cards open. Circle of Protection Black. I mean, if you're a black deck, then that Frozen Shade, also kind of interesting. A zero one that you can pay black mana to pump its power and toughness. Right, so many of the black cards in this set required you to be heavy, heavy black in order to make work well. Shatter, our first piece of artifact removal. Another copy artifact coming down. Scavenging Ghoul, that a creature that gets uh, counters every time a creature dies and it can gradually reach a point where it can regenerate. Other ma otherwise, it's just a 4-mana 2-2. Two -two. And Wall of Stone, setting a new toughness record for this draft. Watch out, Creature Bond, you have a new target on hand. 0-8 for 3. Yeah, this is not an embarrassment of riches here, if Frozen, anything, yeah, another. The, the reverse. I kind of like the Frozen Shade here, assuming yep. that you're already black. Yep, it is clearly the best limited card in the pack. Yeah, these, these players having to roll with the punches when it comes to these packs a little bit. Six lands in this, sorry, seven lands in this pack. I mean, at least if you're unfamiliar with this set, there are fewer cards to have to read. That's right. Some of them you already know, like Shatter. Some of them you may never understand, like Benalish Hero. <laughs> Benalish Hero, considering the number of words of rules text on it, unbelievably, unfathomably complicated. Right. Yeah, the Oracle text on banding is hilariously long. We do urge you to double check. I think that there's, there's been a few articles come up recently explaining banding quite well, actually, based on the fact that these drafts have been going on throughout our year of celebration of the 25th anniversary of Magic. You can see that that playmat, that playmat available at these GPs, only one GP left after this, that one being in Chiba, where you can get hold of that one. Uh, there's even, if you get there fast enough, a version where that Black Lotus is foiled up on the uh, thing. Now, false orders coming down here. That kind of an unusual one. That was a common, and it kind of let you change how one creature blocks. Definitely one that might require a little bit of reading from some of the players at this table. Prodigal Sorcerer, a nice one. Red Elemental Blast also, the aforementioned Benelish Hero. Iron Clorox we like. Sunglasses of Urza, because, you know, sometimes you've got to protect your eyes. Uh, Urza heading out, and that one, it can mean that white mana in your mana pool could be used as red mana if you so choose. And then there's a lure at the end of things. Yes, now, the golden apple. If uh, the player with a Thicket Basilisk is able to put a lure on their Thicket Basilisk, this can work very well. Once a creature has lure on it, it has to be blocked by all creatures able to block it. And, of course, Thicket Basilisk destroys every creature that blocked it. It's not Death Touch. It's just a triggered ability that every creature that gets in a fight with it will end up uh, dying. So Thicket Basilisk Lure, one of the very first combos yes, that we saw in Magic the, the Gathering. Earliest Wizards is building our decks for us combos. One has to wonder if an alternate universe, ChannelFireball.com, was called ThicketBasiliskLure.com. <laughs> the same vintage in terms of these uh, combos, so even if one of them first. is a little bit more potent. So I imagine that is the Basilisk player that took that. And if you can put a regeneration on that Thicket Basilisk as well, suddenly you've just got a reusable Wrath of God every turn. Right. So I think I think Prodigal Sorcerer was the most powerful card there to pick, but the, if you're green and have the Basilisk lore is a, a pretty cool thing to try to pull off. The games where you pull it off, I think there's a good chance that you're going to win those games unless someone can find their Fireball or their Terror or similar to kill off the uh, creature somehow. And you can even get it to where, you know, lure on an Iron Root Tree Folk, attack and kill your opponent's only creature, and then they can't play anything else because the, the Tree Folk would just pick it off. Gradually working our way around. The, the countdown very much happening in earnest now to see whether or not we're going to see a piece of the Power Nine. For those of you unfamiliar, that's one of the five Moxes. 
Bl uh, Black Lotus, Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, or Time Twister. Haven't seen any of them yet in this draft, but a lot of fingers firmly crossed in the hope that it could happen yet. Yeah, mine are. That's the most exciting part of this. Another Pestilence. It is a common. Stream of life alongside it. That the X spell that lets you gain life. Not quite a fireball. No. <laughs> the unfireball. Psychic Venom. Grizzly Bears. When we refer to Grizzly Bears, that's why. Uh, Orcish Oriflam alongside a Nether Shadow there. Nether Shadow, a creature that gets to come back if there are lots of creatures above it in the graveyard. But realistically speaking, how many creatures is anyone going to have to put in the graveyard above it? Right, that's the rare. It's a two mana, one, one haste uh, that can come out of the gra graveyard if there are three creature cards above it. It's a graveyard order matters card. This is one of the reasons that in Legacy you have to keep your graveyard in the correct order. Nether Shadow does care about where the uh, cards are in the graveyard. Some pretty cool art, though, on that one. Now, Orkish Oriflam, in this set, it's uh, casting cost three colorless and a red. When attacking all creatures, get plus one power. It was one of the cards that actually ended up being misprinted in, um, in alpha as a casting cost of one and a red. That's right. Pretty big dis difference there. Now, there's a Wanderlust sort of chilling out on the bottom of the screen. Not quite sure why. There should only be 15 cards in this booster. I, I, I imagine it's possible there was an extra card in the pack and if there uh, is then that's a a nice pickup for someone because Wanderlust is actually quite a quite a powerful card it's a consistent source of damage dealing one damage to target creatures controller during upkeep right you just put enchant your opponent's creature with it and they take one yeah, stick it on one of their walls make them pay that's right now as things stand Pestilence the most powerful card in this pack uh, we are now in pack sort of nominal pack three though we're getting towards the end of the draft meaning that if you're not already in black that one might be a difficult pickup what's the next most powerful card uh, I, I think it's that one yeah I think Grizzly Bears <laughs> is a reasonable <laughs> choice and these days you want your Grizzly Bears to have some upside at that point just having a Grizzly Bears you're already pretty pleased with yourself not that there were that many people drafting at this time right. when it came out Yeah, not quite sure how we ended up with 16 cards in this booster, but you know what? Let's embrace the chaos. Someone got themselves a one loss, and they'll be relatively pleased with themselves. Oh, no love for the Psychic Venom, though. You need an Icy Manipulator to make that Psychic Venom good. Icy Manipulator is, of course, in this set. Right. It was one of the most powerful cards in Dominaria Draft, and if it was good in Dominaria Draft, it's excellent in uh, Unlimited Draft here. Oh, you, you can see here that... The players getting more and more excited, very few packs left, desperately hoping to be able to be the person that gets to open one of the Power Nine, potentially, in one of these packs. All right, what have we got? Our first Hell Giant of the draft, alongside a Death Ward and a War Mammoth, so two, two different 3-3s three for four here, one of them with Trample. Wall of Wood, a 0-3 wall for one mana. And summon in there. Sea Serpent, a 5-5 with Island Homes. You need islands in both sides of the battlefield it's before it can attack. Giant growth as well. An anti-card is our Dark Pact, anti, not going to work out too well in this draft. Control Magic, though, a wow. very potent card in this draft. Yeah, Psionic uh, draft Blast, format. two amazing blue uncommons. Psionic Blast, Char, only blue. Modern uh, Legal, thanks to Time Spiral. Dark Pact, it's been brought up on our screen here. It's got beautiful artwork. If you're a Quinton Hoover fan, this is one of his greatest pieces of artwork, I believe. Yeah. But it's not going to do very much for you in draft because anti, just not a thing in this format. You can swap the top card of your library with either card from the anti. Uh, that's a permanent uh, exchange. Right, but the, uh, the rules of this draft are that no one is playing for anti, so that card is not allowed to be put into your deck. Yeah, anti, one of the ideas in Magic that didn't really last too terribly long outside the base set. There was uh, Jewel Bird in Arabian Nights. Uh, yeah, I think it went all the way through, like, Homelands or something like that. Um, yeah, the first, for the first two years, they were putting cards that dealt with anti, but the players really never liked playing that way. Yeah, losing your most powerful cards, not something that's too attractive. Control Magic, a lovely pickup for someone yeah, there. Yeah, someone picked Sonic Black's Blast ahead of Control Magic. I think that's just wrong. Control Magic, I believe, is... I mean, you get to effectively kill a creature right, and put a creature into it's play. It's mind control. There's been many variants of that card in Bolas's Clutches from Dominaria, but it's only four mana. And just 
the incredibly small number of good creatures that anyone's going to have in their deck, just taking one of them is incredible. And it says something that there are lots of creatures in this in this format that Wizard of the Coast would never print uh, a, a direct reprint of because they're just not powerful right. enough. Absolutely. And then you've got something like Control Magic that I can't imagine that R&D is too keen to reprint an exact Control Magic because no. it's a little bit too powerful. Right. At this we printed it at five, and usually even then it's at rare. Um, so a format out uncommon. It's just a, a just a backbreaking card. Okay, so we have a whole host of cards already coming out. Nothing too terribly scary just yet. Flight might be uh, relevant if you can put it on a big creature. Sea Serpent coming down now. Another giant growth. There is our Rock Hydra. Big expel. A White Knight. A Resurrection. And finally, Goblin Balloon Brigade coming down. White Knight, lovely in a Pestilence deck or against one. Uh, Rock Hydra initially getting picked up to be red there. It's a creature expel, effectively. Yeah. It's, it comes with a number of heads equal to the X that you pay for it. And if it would take damage, then you're, uh, it loses a head. It gets smaller unless you sped red. And you can then gradually put more heads on it at a relatively expensive three red mana to do so. Right. This kind of was the forefather of many of the Hydra cards that we print now. We've moved that creature type into green squarely. And, but, you know, this one's not too bad. If you're going to be playing 20 lands in your deck... You can easily make an 8-8 Rock Hydra. It's going to dominate the battlefield. Now, White Knight, one of the things that it's got going for it, protection from black, I mean, in addition to being a very efficient creature, protection from black means it's not going to get hit by Pestilence. It's not going to hit by Terror, Paralyze. It's got so many different removal spells in this format that it can just kind of ignore. Grey Ogre getting picked up here. Goblin Balloon Brigade, another one of those cards that had slightly weird wording when it was first printed. It reads red, goblins gain flying. Oh. It only actually refers to itself. That's right. So it's a 1-1 one, one that can gain flying for a single red mana. And it's uh, strictly better than Mons Goblin Raiders. Yep. That was something that was happening even in just the first card set ever made. Something's always got to be better or worse. That's right. It's, it's nice to help m people feel smart to have things of slightly different... Uh, so can you imagine White Knight being a liability against the Pestilence deck? Because it Cause the, cause pestilence the Pestilence is never, never going to go, go away. away. I mean, in a Pestilence deck, it's very potent. Absolutely. So Hal from Beyond, a powerful card in here. Another Prodigal Sorcerer. Ooh, a little stumble there. Another Frozen Shade. Some Black Drafter will be quite happy with either of those two things. Personal Incarnation, this is a really interesting one, but also an Icy Manipulator and the slightly unusual Ice Storm, the Green Stone Rain. So Personal Incarnation, this is probably the one that requires the most explanation. So for <laughs> three white, 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 you get a 6-6, six, six, and you can redirect damage done to the Personal Incarnation to its uh, owner. Um, so that means that it's a 6-6 six, six that can take kind of as much damage as you want, um, um, you can keep it alive very easily, but if it does die, then the caster loses half of their life, rounding up that loss. So it's a bit of a risk, right, but a 6-6 six, six is a gigantic creature the in this stats format. stats on it are incredible, and yes, if, if your opponent fireballs it for 6, you can just take one of that yourself if you want to and keep it alive. Uh, it's kind of the opposite of Veteran Bodyguard. The Veteran Bodyguard took all your damage onto itself, and this one lets you take the Personal Incarnation's damage onto you. Not surprised to see uh, Icy Manipulator go first because, firstly, it goes in any deck very easily, and there aren't you don't even need to tap down very many things in this format. There are, the chances of someone having two terrifying threats comparatively low. You see, it says it, Mono Artifact on it. Yeah, so it doesn't have a tap symbol because at this point a tap symbol There's wasn't a thing. No, there there are tap symbols. Like Prodigal Sorcerer has a tap symbol, or, or maybe it doesn't have a symbol. It says tap, right? It says the yes. word tap. Um, they could have put that on on here, but the way they delineated artifacts back then was poly artifacts could be used more than once like iron star is a poly artifact you can use that more than once a turn an ice manipulator is a mono artifact which means it can only be used once a turn and the way you denote it if you used it was to tap it and here we can see prodigal sorcerer neatly brought up, up for us there says tap to deal one damage right, to any sorry, target the, you're right the tap symbol didn't show up i, I believe until it was revised it was a t kind of on its side right. and then when you got to i think fourth edition it became more similar to the tap symbol that we know and love these days. So War Mammoth uh, and Hill Giant again coming along in pairs, these three threes for four. One of them has Trample, one of them gets to be red. Which is better is anybody's guess. So here's an Animate Artifact. So in principle we could get our Animate Artifact onto a, um, 
a time vault here. And there was an instill energy in, in this draft as well. Volcanic eruption, an interesting one. Another X spell, X blue, blue, blue. And it means that you get to... Destroy X mountains. Yeah. A very blue card. Just the most blue card imaginable. <laughs> the animate artifact, interesting. It means that you get to take an artifact and give it a power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. So very good against zero cost artifacts, just gets to kill them. Uh, Copper Tablet, another interesting one. It's dealing one damage to each player during their upkeep. A consistent source of damage to both players, but your opponent taking damage first. Right, we haven't seen many expensive artifacts that, that animate artifact could make it to a threat. I guess Ice Manipulator is kind of the most expensive one, but I don't think yeah, turning I mean, your Icy into a 4-4 is the right play here. Um, but yeah, putting it on Time Vault, if you have it still energy, now suddenly you have an infinite turn combo. That's kind of the dream. And that was, I believe, another one of the kind of the duelist original most powerful combos in Magic. I mean, a combo that lets you take all the turns has to be among the most powerful things that you can be doing in any format. As we saw in Modern. Yeah. Uh, earlier, taking the taking turns deck at the beginning. We like of the a bit day. of that. I mean, it looks like the person, or one of the two people, should I say, with uh, a Time Vault may get the opportunity to assemble this combo. I kind of hope it happens. Um, whether we get to catch it on camera or not, it's just a nice little story from the early days of Magic. And to me, those combos were the things that took me from someone who was like, oh, this game seems kind of fun to. I want to play this game and get lots of cards and play a lot was the potential to do something really cool and unexpected. And when uh, the original Encyclopedia of Magic that had images of all the cards in came out and it became easy for everyone to know what every card did, comparatively speaking, uh, that was the moment that I was fully invested. And since then, we've, of course, seen a zillion different combos come up across all sorts of different formats. And that sort of thought experiment of what you can do with Magic, as big as uh, actually playing the games for me. Yeah, the combo that blew my mind when uh, someone did it against me was uh, Sarah Angel and Stasis. Oh, wow, yeah. You've got a Vigilant Creature and other things and not untapping. Sacrifice coming down. That's the first one of those that we've seen here. You can sacrifice a creature to generate a lot of mana. There's a clone in there. Uh, Lightning Bolt, of course, just a straightforward removal spell. Clone gets to come into play for four mana as a copy of any creature. There are a few powerful creatures in this draft. Yeah, it's definitely a great card. You can copy your own or your opponent's. This card's been reprinted many, many times. Yeah, it's Conservator, a a way of preventing kind of two damage at a time. Damage prevention artifact, but maybe it's good enough to play if you're running short on cards. Yeah, this this is the point where people will be looking through their pile of cards, hoping that there are more packs than there in fact are, because we are fast approaching the end of this draft, and right now, what you've got is pretty much all you're going to get, um, depending on your seat. Conservator went second. <laughs> speaks to the power level of these cards. Another I reverse damage as the rare. Sure yeah. That's not what anyone was hoping to see. Yeah, reverse damage. Yes, if someone points a giant fireball at your head, you feel pretty pleased about yourself, but it's not impacting the board. All it essentially is is a really big life gain spell. Right, it only works on damage that you take. You can't even use it to save a creature. Nice bit of artwork on it, though. You know, Damon Willich. We didn't see artwork. too many from him. It doesn't look like she's taking damage. She's taking the reverse of damage. She seems <laughs> quite pleased about it. All right, so these players looking at what they've got going on. Are there any more packs at this point? Or is it time to build? Yeah, these, these players. You know, Marcio Carvalho, he's already been through one of these drafts, so he's got a fair idea of how these, th these things work. But all of these other players, there's no reason to think that almost anyone on the planet, beyond the people that we've seen uh, in our uh, various events this year, would have drafted with Unlimited or indeed Beta. It's just not one of those sets that's really uh, ever designed for draft or used for draft at any point. And so that is the end of our draft. We didn't get a chance to see any pieces of power. If anything, the thing that I'm most excited about is potentially there to be some kind of shenanigans around Animate Artifact on uh, Time Vaults. But, but there were some very powerful cards in there. Oh, yeah. And I think that we really did get ourselves a bit of a history lesson there about both the, the good things about the bad old days and maybe some of the things that are a little bit more frustrating. We got an island in the rare slot. Yeah, absolutely. We got a, a, nine, a nine basic land booster. These things do happen. We've seen it here first. 
Uh, and these guys, they are going to now get together, well, go off on their own, I guess, build their decks. And they will be playing it out to see whether or not they can get the title of Unlimited Limited Master. Right now, Marcio Carvalho, having already won one of these drafts in the past. He, in Barcelona, right, he qualified crazy. and won with a Shivan Dragon. This time round, we didn't see any creatures quite on the power level of Shivan Dragon, so it's going to be a bit more a slog to, to win those games, but we will be able to bring you details, at least in the text coverage, of how these things played out as we look at heading back toward our modern Grand Prix. For those of you that have sort of lost track of where we're at in the modern, uh, we have our top eight. Uh, we have Affinity, a couple of Mardu decks, uh, Abzan, Red Green Aljazi, Tron, Amulet Bloom, and Crack Clan Ironworks. We'll get a chance to bring you that top eight soon enough. Do not go anywhere. We'll have more mutton after these messages.